curious, speaking of bulking up, what you think about Micah Parsons. He's skipping the Cowboys offseason workout program, which is not the end of the world. That happens to bulk up for more time at defensive end. He's listed at 245, says he's currently 252 and looking to put on more weight with the idea of going, I'm not, I don't know if it's like 100% at defensive end, but like, so he doesn't wear down, kind of like last year. Yeah, um, I think I saw Todd Archer with a tweet this morning, Kevin, that said the last half of the season he played 19 snaps at linebacker. He was a defensive end in his mind without sure. telling everybody. Uh, and, you know, we kind of observed how good he was at, at, at that. The one thing I still am, am sad about, I'm curious is how to, how Dan Quinn is going to, you know, revisit this is that he was so good at a lot of different things that he could, you know, be a, a very, it was a mismatch. You were like, he's mismatched. Now you're going to line him up on sides and say, go. And that's, that's fine. He can get there. That's good. Uh, he did say, Kevin, I, don't, I, th I believe I'm never going to play over 255 in my life. Okay. So I think that's as much as he wants to put on as 255, and he thinks that's going to give him the, the best ability to maintain the speed and also have the strength and bulk that he needs to make it through an NFL season. Well, and I was going through pro football focus statistical breakdown of his stat percentages, and rookie year, 54% as – like what you think of as your kind of traditional linebacker spot. Right. Or even though, even though now, is that even a thing anymore as you shift around linebackers more and more? And only 18.6% on the edge yeah. this last year, 80 and a half. That is a shocking on the edge. turn. And, and quite honestly, Kevin, I know a lot of people are like, Dan Quinn knew it. Sure. I don't know that Dan Quinn knew it when he was watching him in the draft or like at, at the they didn't have combine. He had at the personal workouts, but I think Dan Quinn knew it whenever he said, "I have lost all of my defensive ends. I need somebody to pass to rush the passer." And he was like, "Micah, can you do it?" And he, Micah was like, "Yeah." And he said, "All right." And they did it, and they're like, "Oh, okay." That's when I think they really knew. But he also had the vision for it. He was like, "I, I want to try this out." He had to convince people in the in the room that we, we can get this done. And then they did. And here we are with a really good pass rusher, and that's great. Um, yeah, man, I, I think he's I think the bulk part of it is nice. And that kind of feeds into the idea of Cowboys positional strength because I think one of their positional positions of strength now coming out of the NFL draft, and this might sound crazy since we've been waiting for this forever, is I think it's the defensive line now. I really do. Like, especially if you move Micah more and more off the edge, even though obviously you saw him a massive amount, is now with Mozzie Smith, who people think is the best run stuffer in the draft, I think you can look across this defensive line and be like, that's pretty damn good. I am with you. I'm trying to pull up uh, real quick their, their depth because I think their depth is tremendous, too. I really think that you can have a first four, second four. Because you go like this. Demarcus, theoretically, if you want, Demarcus Lawrence, Mozzie Smith, Neville Gallimore, Dorrance Armstrong, potentially, if you're not factoring in Micah Parsons. Take Neville out of there. If you, do you want Give me Bohanna Osa. or Osa? Okay. I, I'm going to line those two guys okay. up together. So then you go, okay, so then you go like this. Demarcus Lawrence, Mozzie, Osa, and Micah. Let's just say, yep. for example. Yeah. Right. And then on the second team, then you go... Sam Williams like and him. Dorrance Armstrong on the outside. It's a good two Dude, backups. any team that has Dorrance Armstrong as their backup, yeah. according to the Joneses, is an elite team. And then theoretically, Jonathan Hankins and Gallimore. Yeah. Or however yep. you yep. want to say And you haven't even named Dante Fowler Jr. yet. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah, no, it's very. there's a lot of depth and a lot of talent there. And uh, I, I don't know. I mean, he's going to be young. And he probably won't get much time. Ten, yeah, Fahoko probably will get ten percent of snaps. He probably won't be active on on days that you're healthy. Yeah, because you, you usually weeks, can't yeah. have ten defensive linemen active. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I don't think you have ten defensive linemen active on game I don't day. Think so. so it's going to be a, a probably tough for him to have active time. But that is to your point, and I I'm with you. Like we talked about this earlier in the week. That is a major strength for the Dallas yeah. Cowboys. I don't see what other position really competes with how deep you are. Quarterback. 
I mean, you got Dak and Cooper Rush and Will Grit. No, I'm joking, Mike. I know you know I'm joking. You listen to me. <laughs> oh, no. Mike said li- he, okay. we lost to Nucci, the <laughs> hat maker. Okay, I know. All right. the, uh, I, I agree. There's, the there's not a ball of football that they played this Hey, Whatever. I told you he's been invited to Denver training camp now. There is not as much. You know what that's for? Confidence for the secondary. There's not as much depth and good it's like talented hired Mike depth to throw batting practice yeah, anywhere it's else. Be good on this on this defense as there is on the defensive line. Mike's right about that. Like there, you just can't layers down. You're like, oh man, it's still really good. I like their secondary a lot. Uh, I I love I still love Diggs. You know, Chiafalo can hate Diggs all he wants the way he does. Um, I I like the addition of Stefan Gilmore a lot. And then you sure. hear Diggs talk about, hey man, I'm still trying to get to be that the even the next level of my career, the next level of great NFL player. And having Gilmore here is going to only help me because I'm a student of the game. Kevin, I uh, I can't remember if you were there with me. But man, Diggs and Al Harris, they connect really well. Like those two got along. Baby was probably being born then. I, I can I couldn't remember if it was which, which trip it was. Uh, but you know, Al Harris do, has done a great job with him. So I like that. I like that Jordan Lewis is there and Deron Bland. Like you yep. got Bland, and then you added this Eric Scott kid. I'm interested in that. I'm very interested in where they go with Wright. And then I don't know. Does does safety is that two different ones for y'all? I we, I think so. Okay. All right. But then I feel I still good like about safety. I as love well. their cornerbacks and I love their set their safeties. Yesterday in the car, my son asked me about, "Hey, who's that linebacker you liked a few years ago?" And it's Jabril Cox. Cox. And I said, "Man, I don't know. It doesn't seem to be working out for him." So, what are your thoughts on how much Jabril Cox can help out in 2023? Because or if he can, if he even makes the team, this I is guess. A, this is a this is critical you, off season for yes, him. Yes, you need him. And honestly, it's maybe a critical off season for the Cowboys. You need him to be able to contribute something because otherwise their depth is meh. Are you thinking LVE and Damone Clark? Yeah. Like I don't know how fast you think Overshone can do anything. But a lot like, of you, a lot of people are telling me that Overshone's going to be starting, and I'm I'm not. What is Tack sure McKinley's position on this team? Tackle. Oh, defensive tackle. You don't think defensive they'll run him end, out at linebacker? I. Mean, I I think I'd be very interested in that. I'd be very interested. He just, his size said that, you know, when we were watching him in, in college, Kevin, yeah. that dude lined up safety. We were like, what the hell's sure. going on here? So he's got position flex. <laughs> I think you could see some time for him at linebacker, but my my general thought is it would be great if, let's just throw Overshone in the mix. If him or, or, or Jabril Cox could really stand out in the process along the way, because now all of a sudden, if you feel more comfortable going LVE... Damone Clark, one of the younger kids. And I know people are like, oh, you need three linebackers, but not really, right? Like, you see that alignment, it's more rare as we go on and on and on. And I feel like if we can have three quality linebackers, you should feel pretty good about that. Here's my I just don't know. My understanding about Jabril, who we're huge fans of. Like, we yes. want this dude to become yes. what we expect because he's supposed to be very good in coverage. There have been times where he hasn't shown that he's good in coverage. Uh, there are things that they don't trust about what he's trying okay. to do. He's still working on it. The opportunity, the injury hurt him the, the, the first year. They're they're watching him, but they just still aren't at the point where they trust him completely. He still has some things that he has to do to prove and earn that spot on the field. Having Anthony Barr last year, was that a, you know, you hear Stephen Jones talk about progress stoppers. Was Anthony Barr a progress stopper or was it just a stopgap? for another se- an off-injury season for Jabril Cox to grow, we'll find out. Now, I actually had one other position that now, because of the draft, I do believe I look at as a position of strength is tight end. Is I was to the point going into the draft where I felt pretty good about the tight end position already. Yes. And then when you use a second round on them and you've got Schoonmaker, Hendershot, and Ferguson... I feel really good about the tight ends room. And so that's another position, as long as we're talking about positional strength. Do you, do you wish you had a little more veteran Modern presence? It's, it's unknown, right? You're you're going off a hypoth I sure. like what you're doing. I agree with you, but it also is going off of hope. Um yeah, I optimism could, I could rather than the defensive line. We've seen a lot of yeah. those guys contribute already. And I am pretty high on Jake Ferguson, but I think you're I think you're right. 
And I am hopeful that the tight end room turns out to be like, wow, good Hind for us. Is Hendershot to y'all not the more modern version of tight end? I could see that, but just the way they used them last year, I yep. get the sense that like as much as I would like to modern it up a little bit, they're like, no, 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 we, we're fine. Yeah, they were doing things. And I'm, I'm curious, you know, was it Mark Chimura? Uh, that, like, I'm wondering if these, if Mike McCarthy's going to try to turn these tight ends into Mark Chimura. Uh, on, on the field. Yeah, on the field. Not off the field. Not off the field because that's science and that's really, I think that's illegal at this point. Um, he was illegal. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> I, the right I don't know exactly what you're talking about, so I don't remember that incident but or that, whatever. The tight end room, I like the trio. I, you're right. The depth there, I feel like each one of them. Now, none of them are Travis Kelsey. None of them are Antonio Gates right now. But I think you have three solid pieces there that can do some things. So I'm I'm very happy with that. Uh, yeah, there's there's a there are a lot of strengths on this team, Kevin, which was is a back to back 12 win team. Yeah, which their main focus was how do we get to that next spot? And they brought back a lot of things because they said we know we can win 12 with this. We know we can compete in our division with this. Now what can take us to the next place? Oh well, yes, definitely. Do not follow in Shamira's off the field activities. I'll go look it up. And for people who are asking, because you know we did talk about the offensive line a great deal. I want to say two days ago, but bringing up the left guard is I was listening to Will McClay when he was on with G Bag and. They don't seem to be sweating that as much as I definitely am. I'm with you on that. Because whether it's uh, Ijogu or whether it's they're like, no, we're seriously going to take the best five and we'll make them all fit the way they fit. But Will McClay was not prepared to commit to an offensive line, or at least he did not want us to know how they were going to stack up the offensive line. But I understand your concern about that. The... He said one thing in there, Kevin, that I took from and went, okay, I, I just we're just going to have to wait, is what I took was new offensive line coach. And when he yeah, said when he said that, he was like, look, they're true. still trying to figure out some things. It sounds, it sounds like they'd love to leave him at Tyler Smith at left tackle and move on, and that coach is now connected with that guy forever. Uh, but I will give the hands up. I'll have to wait patiently to see what they do to the – New offensive line coach. Let him figure out what he what he can do with these guys first. So I I agree. You and I are both concerned about sure. it. We want to know, uh, but we're gonna let this guy do his job first.